Hey, this is Kirk. And this is Bird. It's the Kirk and Bird Show. And we've got a special show for you tonight. We got three outstanding Prince William County athletes that excelled at different sports and they're going to different schools. But what is unique about these young men is they are going to be going to some of the best schools in the country. They're going to service academy. And we've got Cam Benkowski of Battlefield. He's going to be playing football at West Point, playing for the Army. And then we've got Cade Merritt. He's a baseball player, and he's going to the Virginia Military Institute. Thank you for joining us, Caden. And then Hogan Sharp, <laughs> Mastag, he plays tennis. How, I know at least three tennis state championships. Did you ever have doubles? Or was they all no, we made it to the finals, but we never, we never won, so. That's all good, but he's a tennis star, and he's going to be going to the Air Force Academy. So welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yes, We've also got Jay Golson, and he's a dude that's running um, the real Prince William County Sports Facebook page. He gets all the connections with the athletes, uh, with parents, with coaches, and he's a pretty good real estate agent. Welcome to the show, Jay. Hey, remember, I'm the voice of Hilton Football and the voice of Battlefield Baseball. Woo! There we go. <laughs> right. Mark, why don't you tell folks how they can can find us, and then we'll get right into meeting these young men. Yes. All right, if you're watching this, you're on YouTube, hit subscribe like uh, Cam, Caden, and Matt already did. Uh, their parents, their grandparents, they've all subscribed. Um, follow us on Twitter, at the Kirk and Bird. And then uh, we're on some other platforms for podcasting. Just Google us. We won't name all of them. And then also, um, we are trying to catch up with Jay as far as the number of people um, for a uh, Facebook forum, and that's the, the Nova <laughs> High School Sports. CJ is so good. The uh, the Nova High School Sports is 703-540, uh, and it's a, uh, a Facebook community. And we are going to try to keep up with Jay, who posts about 25 times a day on there. So, uh, you know, what we're going to try to do is like when, when, when Cam committed to – uh, Army at West Point, you know, we're going to try and, and put that on there. And then any of the local press, we're going to try to put that on there, whether it be Inside Nova, whether it be the Loudon Times, whether it be, you know, any of the uh, the papers out there, uh, we'll try to put that out there. And then, um, you know, sometimes it's fun to talk about subjects as long as everybody behaves themselves in a, a civil way. So please check us out. We want to talk about uh, you all have that one thing in common. You're going to service academies, but but let's talk about what you, your high school careers first. So you all had been extremely successful. You go to three of the top schools, not just in the county, Prince William County, but Northern Virginia and, and the state of Virginia. They're quality schools. You've been a part of some great programs. So why don't you tell us about not just this past season, but tell us about your careers at your schools and some of the successes you had. Don't be bashful. This is your chance to tell people, hey, yeah, that's kind of a ball. All right, we'll start with you, uh, Matt, because you're a Colgan Shark and you are the man. I remember <laughs> when you are, were a ninth grader and you won your first state championship, and I was like, oh, snap. Okay, because I have a niece who's really good in tennis. I don't know if you've heard of her. Her name is, I think, you know what, you were, your freshman year might have been her senior. Um, Maya Bird, she's at ODU now, but she won a bunch at Mari. Um, she actually, I think your coach, she got hurt uh, three years ago in the state finals, and she would have been going to defend, you know, her her title after winning starting as a freshman. But tell us about your amazing career at Pogue. Yeah, well, um, I spent all four years on the Colgan tennis team, and um, I think that, you know, at least for, for me, one of the best experiences that I had being on, on a, a high school tennis team was, um, just being part of a team, no matter, you know, the skill level of everybody, you know, all four years, we had new people each year. Um, so, I mean, getting to just be part of a team, cause you know, I think one of the, one of the like highlighting factors about tennis is that usually it's a completely individual sport. So, um, especially outside of high school, um, you know, there's, there's no, there's no sort of team, team events going on, at least at the, at least at the, at the higher levels. So, um, uh, I think that, you know, being on a team 
kind of was a, a unique opportunity to to be able to experience you know being especially um you know playing number one my freshman year you know most most people were older than me but you know it was you know I was still um I was still leading the team which was kind of an adjustment to make um especially since you know I had been just just doing it solo for the for most of the time before that um but yeah I I um we just we had good seasons uh, as a team for all four years we we actually lost in the regional semifinals all four years so we had we uh, we came close many times to making it to the states but um we just came up short every time um you know there's some other great schools around that had pretty good teams as well so but um afterwards we uh there we have the individual competitions for tennis um i think they have it for a few other other sports as well but I was able to compete in the postseason just by myself representing the school. And I was able to win it uh freshman, junior, or freshman, sophomore, and junior year. Wow. And this year I just fell up short in the finals. Um, so but regardless, it was it was a great four years for me. And I learned a lot, not just playing on the tennis court, but also just kind of being part of a team. It was a it was a cool, it was a cool thing to do. And I think it will help me a lot, especially at Service Academy. So right. A question though from me, Matt. What what was your record um at Colgan? Oof, I they never actually gave like I, I never actually got a record because it just it kind of it varies every year and it's so complicated because there's team matches, there's like individual matches. Um oh, I see. But I, I think that I probably played between 25 and 30 matches every year. So um just counting four losses with the doubles in the state finals every year, and then one loss in the singles finals. So probably I'll, I'll just, I'll shoot. I'll, I'll say probably like 65, 65 to 70 wins and five losses. Woo! Wow. wow. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Good job, man. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Wow. Outstanding. So that was Three state championships at the high, at the highest classification, class six. Wow. All right. We'll come back. We'll learn more a bit about how you got into tennis and growing up. Um, but let's go ahead and go now to my man, Cam Binkowski, uh, part of a lineage of great football players. And he's a proud Patriot. I'm, trying to, I'm <laughs> just joking with him. I joked with him all beforehand because it's such a big rivalry. I went to Bethel High School and our arch rival was Hampton. So if somebody had done that with me, I, I whatever. But it's just a joke. Cam, tell us a little bit about your outstanding career. Yes, sir. So um, I played as a battlefield Bobcat. Yes, sir. I was <laughs> the best uh, defensive tackle in the Commonwealth of Virginia, also. Yeah. Um, I played three years here at Battlefield for football. Um, fourth year is coming up. Um. I would just say everything about Battlefield football is awesome. The staff here that I've been blessed to have for these first three years, they came in right when I was a freshman. They've been a great staff and a great mentor for me as a football player and a person off the field. And um, yeah, we just, we've been able to make a couple of good runs in the playoffs and everything. And I've unfortunately fallen short these first three years, but uh, you know, we're doing everything we can in the off season and just doing everything we can to be able to make the best run we can this season. A question, Cam. Were you a, a starter as a freshman also? Um, I I wasn't because I'd uh, sit out most of my freshman year due to a you know an injury, so that was unfortunate. But I was able to learn a lot, especially with some of the defensive linemen I had by my side. You know, in, uh, getting introduced to D line as a freshman, I was able to have a couple stars like Ty Gordon, and Wesley Williams, to learn a lot my freshman year from those guys, and it was a very good learning experience for the start of my high school career. Now, I watched your huddle um, tonight. Man, can anybody block you? Because you're a, you're a monster out there. Uh, no, I don't. Obviously, I'm not going <laughs> to sit up here and say someone can block me. But um, you know, that's the mentality everyone should have. So exactly. Yes, sir. And we've had your brother on too. So you come yes, from a very athletic family. Yes, your brother's gonna be playing at Villanova. Uh, I know you've you've got another brother and then you've got a sister. 
must be a competitive ho- household, right? Yes, yes, sir. That's right. No, I'm going to say it. 40 yard dash, you versus Mia. Who wins that match? Uh, still got to go with me. So, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Hayden. Caden, tell us about your 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 career. Now you are at a are you a senior? Right, you're you just I'm going into, senior year, yeah. going, going into my senior year. Yeah, going into my senior. Twenty twenty five. So you're going into your senior. So you opened. You, did you start at Gainesville when the school? I opened? did. I did. The first year that it opened is when I started my freshman year. So it was empty. We didn't have any seniors. We our junior class was kind of dry. So wasn't a lot of people in the school, but. Um, you know, I think that's built up a lot the last two years I've been here for sure. We've kind of transformed into, I'd say, more of a powerhouse for some of our sports in in this yeah. district, Mix County. So that school's amazing, man. Yeah. How, how fast yeah. y'all have gotten really good, really good. Yeah. Now, can you play pitcher and outfield, or what's your what do you play position wise? Yeah, so I play center, and um, I pitch a lot too. Yeah. What's your favorite one? Do you have a favorite position or you don't you don't care? Just put you on the field. Just put me on the field. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Good stuff. You're a power hitter too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you're bit. 6'1, 190, which in baseball that is extremely solid, and you're only gonna get bigger. So with, with what Jay was saying, has um has VMI talked to you about um if they're gonna um if you're going to pitch at the next level? Yes. Um, the plan as of right now is to try to do both. Um, obviously, that can change as you start to go along throughout the process. It's tough to do both in college. So um, we will, we'll see what happens. But the plan right now is, yeah, going to do both for as long as I can, the best that I can. So These are the sports you're going to be playing in college, but what other sports or activities have you been involved in during your, your years at high, in high school? Start with you, Cam. Me, Cameron. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, in high school, in high school, I've been strictly football. Um, I played a lot of other sports growing up, like wrestling, basketball, and baseball. I played a lot, a lot of travel basketball when I was growing up, and um, wrestling for middle school. But high school strictly for me has been football. So now in basketball, what was your game high for um, points? Oh, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you that, but. Yeah, which one? Which one do you think helped you the most? Helps you the most in football? Uh, probably definitely wrestling. For, oh uh, yeah, hands. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, my son had never wrestled, but um, I knew getting him ready for to play football in high school. Uh, I had he had run a lot of track, played a lot of football, but but I had him wrestle his eighth grade year a bit, and it helped him. It helped yeah. him a lot. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Caden? Um, throughout high school, I've only really played baseball. I played uh, basketball my freshman year. Um, but yeah, before high school, uh, played lacrosse a little bit. Um, basketball definitely was a lot of my childhood too, but baseball has always been a primary sport. So that's kind of what I've stuck with. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. And what about this you, one. Matt? Matt? Tennis has, tennis has definitely been my primary sport for most of my life. Um, I did play baseball for for a couple of years when I was really young. I mean, like I got up to the machine pitch, and then that it was kind of half and half then. And then I I kind of dropped baseball, and I I stuck mainly with tennis for for the rest of that. And um, yeah, I mean, sports. I mean, Colgan. I I I do. Uh, I have to. Uh, I participated in in the orchestra stuff for all four years while I was there. This is up. So. That was uh that was a big commitment as well. But sports wise, that baseball was uh baseball was really the only other sport that I that I've ever played. Matt, now, what, that, what did you play in the orchestra? What did you play? Sorry? What did you play in the orchestra? The violin. Okay. <laughs> no, no, Matt, I, I have a little experience because again, my niece, who's a rising junior at Old Dominion, has played tennis and she but they identified her as being, you know, probably being pretty good in tennis at around four years old. When did you get started? Or is that something that your parents were 
played and they just or did somebody put a racket in your hand and you or did you something you wanted to do because that's not a traditional sport um that a lot of kids are <clears throat> initially ex exposed to when they first start playing how did you get started yes well um my dad played in junior college um he was i mean he uh he he played a bunch of sports but um he just i think he just took me to my my elementary school one day and just got like one of those foam balls and just had me tap it against the wall. Um, I can't say like specifically when he really decided that that was going to be what I was going to do. Um, but I started when I was five. That was, that was wow. when I started. So, so it's been, it's been, it's been a lot of years in the making. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, it's, I mean, I love the sport. So, I mean, I have, I've had no regrets. It definitely isn't the most common sport around here that most that a lot of people play. It's kind of, it's definitely a little more popular overseas, but, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Ameri is, American tennis is definitely coming up. So. Absolutely. And, and what people may not understand is, is it is really difficult to get a scholarship to play tennis. And thank you, Rusty. It's so very many. difficult of the college athletes are from around they're 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 picking from around the world around the world so when you are you know a US a kid and you're playing college division 1 college tennis that means you're one of the best of the best uh, yeah I, mean, I know my 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 niece's team at old dominion she was the only um you know american on the team um I mean, and, and this is, I mean, I remember this, Kirk, we're from Ham the city of Hampton, Hampton University. Back in the 70s, they had a powerhouse division two tennis program and won some national championships. But most of their roster was was international even back then. Yeah. Yeah, they had guys. I was telling them before you got on, before we started recording, how good they were. They dominated UVA, JMU Tech. They beat everybody. Africa, um, a lot of South America. Um, very few. There was uh, there were a couple of guys from Richmond. They had a Virginia State champion guy out of Richmond. Rozell Lightfoot was his name, but very international. I don't. Matt is is the Air, is the Air Force Academy the same, or it's probably a little different with the academy, isn't it? Well, I'm pretty sure you do have to be a U.S. citizen to to play to play right, uh, yeah. to uh, be in the service academy. So uh, at least the Air Force team, and I'm pretty. Sure, uh, I'm pretty confident, say for the rep for Navy, West Point, and the other teams. I'm pretty sure everybody is American. So, you know, it's funny. I did not realize you have to be an American citizen to go to one of the service cabins. I, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Three things I, I found out: you can't be married, you can't be pregnant, you can't owe any child support payments. Sorry, Rusty. <laughs> Matt, don't get pregnant, dude. Okay. <laughs> I don't plan on it, but. Okay. <laughs> Good research, Jay. That's why you're on the show. All right. Uh Caden, tell us a little bit about um your time. Uh, we, we know you helped open Gainesville, but but what what are some of the things that uh you experienced in your career um there at Gainesville playing baseball? Um experienced a lot of uh more immature players from the beginning just because we were so young um more physically i mean but um kind of been able to grow up with the the same dudes all three years and we're only losing a couple going into my senior year so it's been pretty cool um the relationships that we've built in the program and um with our coaching staff has been awesome so yeah, I definitely don't regret it. Um, wouldn't change it or do it any differently. So, yeah, definitely how, have enjoyed the time I spent there. But how has Colangelo um, Stars helped you in developing as a player? Hugely. Um, I've known Colangelo since I was very little. Um, he's a great dude, great coach. And, um, yeah, I don't think I would be where I am at uh within my career in baseball especially the, the recruiting side that the stars organization does for us athletes it's, it's so difficult with the little amount of scholarships that are given yeah um for baseball 
So getting recruited and getting money is a big deal. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, they've, they've done so much for my development as well. And um, yeah, I couldn't ask for a better program to be around for sure. So when you were, when you were in middle school, the, the kids play middle school baseball or they go to Colangelo stars. Or do they do um, both? I, know, I know a lot of kids do both. I personally wasn't able to play middle school baseball because of COVID. Okay. But, that's right. Um, yeah. But I know a lot of kids do both. Uh, I also know a lot of kids just do stars, but because that's a little more um, competitive, I think. But um, yeah. Okay. Playing yes, in that Cedar Run district, that's a tough district for baseball. I mean, yeah, you, you're Gainesville, you're really good, but your school is only three years old. But you've got Battlefield, Champ has been good, Patriot has been good over the years, but Freedom South Riding won a state championship. Nope. You know, in the in, in what was that? Probably your freshman year. I believe that was my freshman year. Yeah. Yeah. They've been good all three years we've been here, though. Yeah. Definitely yeah. have been content. I think they've been in the state tournament all three years. Yeah. Yep. And that's not even to mention the eastern side of Prince William County or our whole region. So when you take our region into account, you're talking about. Colgan, Forest Park, and you've got those uh, Colonial Forge and all those programs. Yeah. So uh, we and, and 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 so our region is extremely strong in baseball, and of course, you know the northern region with those Fairfax schools, they they do well. Um, so you're you're playing it. I know. Uh, so with the top programs in the state, in the state. Yeah, um, definitely has been very competitive, for sure. Yeah, I don't know the stats, but that region, I think, clearly puts out the most college prospects. Oh yeah, oh, that guy's going all over. Has the to do. The yeah. uh, Renfro kid at Virginia Tech, I think, was first team All American, and then uh, Christopher Newport's got a bunch of kids. I mean, just all over the place. I mean, there's, I, mean, I can't, I don't think there's another region really even close to that region. You guys, the most of the star stars players. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I do want to. I want to hit get back with you, Matt, because I, I want to say, like, you mentioned. I think this is very key. Some of the things you said is that this was in high school. This was your first opportunity to be a part of a team. Now these guys, they're playing team sports, and it's not even, um, you know, a team like basketball where it's just five and a quarter of the time. You know, they've got multiple people out there that are depending on each other and working together, but this was your first time as a team. And I want to talk about that because tennis, I know is, can be a lonely sport, you know, um, <laughs> no, I'm just saying golf, like, golf also, yeah, golf also and swimming, you know, but, but what I mean by that is not just, okay. Cause you'll play doubles and all that. But what I mean by that is there were times you just had to get up on your own and go hit, go hit ball. You know, and go, 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 go training. And it wasn't, and you may be doing it with other people. And I want to find out about that, but it can be like, you have to be very self-motivated. So tell us a little bit about, you started at a young age, but what was your training regimen like? Did your dad, was he your coach? Did you go, did you get to a certain point and then go to trainers? Uh, tell us a little bit about your growing and the way you prepared. And then were so successful right out the gate in high school. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with just kind of my personality. Uh, I'm definitely, um, I'm definitely like I've kind of been grown to be a little more on the reserve side. So, um, but yeah, I I agree. Tennis is definitely a lot more lonely compared to um, to obviously baseball or football, which um sometimes can be harder, but sometimes it could also be easier. Um. Because, you know, team sports, there's a lot more work and things going on. So there's, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot more things that you got to be, that you got to kind of be aware of, um, you know, kind of a lot of things don't, a lot of things are kind of out of your control, which can be, can be definitely difficult, I'm sure at some times, but um, yeah, tennis is definitely unique in the sense that just everything is, everything is on you. So um, yeah, I mean, for at least for like the 13 years I've been playing, I've kind of, 
I've had a lot of different changes and switches to where I play and train and who who I've been coached by. I definitely, I started off with my dad um, for a good while. He uh, he kind of just took me out to uh, to the neighborhood courts, um, just fed me balls. He would hit with me, and you know we just uh, we kind of had that going for a good while. Uh, I didn't start really kind of getting on the radar until I was around like twelve or thirteen. That's when I started being able to compete in these uh these lower age tournaments um it started out well i mean you know there was definitely there's always a hierarchy so i wasn't really out there yet but i started making improvements um i think that when i really started really started um kind of level like really shooting off was when i went to um a tennis academy in South Carolina, my seventh grade year. Uh, I was able to travel. Which one did, which one did you go to? I'm sorry. Smith Stearns. To... Okay. All right. That's in um what what, what part of South Hilton Head. My niece went there. Oh and really? Maya Maya was there. Now again in high school, she would have been so she just finished her sophomore year. So she was two years, but she was there for I think her whole eighth grade seventh and eighth grade so y'all might have been around there been there around the same time okay go ahead cool real quick man i want to ask you though before that before you went to the academy because that's a, that's a serious level right what you say you started about five did you start playing tournaments at five or six or seven no no okay i yeah. started playing i started playing tournaments around the edge of 11 11 or 12 11. So. so my next question is is how far were you traveling by say well, 14, you're in ninth grade, but, but I mean, that's the whole thing because when you're in high school, these tournaments, the way that it used to be, could go all the way from Raleigh up to Baltimore. How far were you going, you know, at 12, 13, or 14? Were you going, obviously, you're probably going overnight down to Virginia Beach, things like that? Uh, I think the farthest that I would travel when I was around 12 or 13 was to, uh, yeah, for Virginia Beach, yep. but... Um, after that, I started travel. I I would I had to travel a lot more to to play the high levels. Like I play, I would go to Kalamazoo, Michigan every year. That was where the national championships were. So that's where I would compete. Um, there was also another plat national championship down in Florida. So yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of traveling that I had to do. Um, so, but yeah, that that was before that. Virginia was usually usually where the tournaments were. And reverberating what Rusty already said, for those, we got a lot of revenue sports fans, right? You know, um, football, basketball, whatever. You have to be really, really, really good to play at the level. He's ranked number one in Virginia and you're top, like way up there nationally. And then the, like Rusty said, these non-revenue sports, they may have a certain amount of scholarships and it's nothing like football or basketball. You see a lot of teams that have kids playing that are not on scholarship. They get no aid whatsoever. Um, so I just wanted to point out the fact that you were playing in Kalamazoo national championships, I mean, is at such, such an elite, elite, elite level. It's unbelievable how good people are. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes. I played, I played. I may have been able to play at some ODAC schools to give you some perspective. Old Dominion, Hamden, you know, Hamden, Sydney, Emory and Henry. Um, and I was, you, you pretty, were, I was pretty good. But you, were, you were regionals, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, he, he, I probably, I probably couldn't take a couple, more than a couple games off of him at his level when I was my age. But I mean, he's he's in a different stratosphere, man. <laughs> did, you, did you hit number one for Phoebus when you were there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Cool. That was like playing, you know. That's like playing number one in Sanibel Island. Obviously, they're so close, you know. So, <laughs> I have a question for uh, for Cam. So, Cam, tell us about your weekly workout schedule off season. What I'm doing right now? Yeah. Uh, Monday through Thursdays, I have uh, lifted at Battlefield at nine in the morning, and then um, 
kind of that whole week. Uh, I have a trainer that I go to. He lives in Maryland, so we meet up at Riverside High School every day. Uh, and then uh, so there's always some some other guys from a bunch of other schools uh, that get work in, and we just do that pretty much every day for a couple hours, Monday through Friday. And same thing on Saturdays, some days, because – and then I also go to C4 um, to do D-line training there and then lifting and speed stuff there as well. So uh, I'm just trying to do the most I can every day to prepare myself for the season. Now, C4 – um how was that c4 oh, yeah it's great uh it's a great environment there great coaches uh, and they really care for your for your growth as a as an athlete they cover all things you need whether it's well there's i go to the trench warriors thing that they have for the defense and offense alignment great work with uh coach brown there he's a great trainer and when you go there for lifting and speed and agility they make sure they can do everything for you to uh, improve now, is it like you and, like I say, a Gainesville lineman and a Patriot lineman all yeah, working together? Yeah, it's a lot of – it's just a lot of kids from Battlefield, uh, Patriot, Gainesville, all those main schools. There's a lot of kids from there that go to C4. Any trash talking going on? Like, hey, we're going to beat you? Uh, yeah, uh, we're always joking around, so. <laughs> okay. My man, Nathaniel Wright, goes there. <clears throat> you know, do you know Nathaniel from Forest Park? Yeah. Nathaniel Wright. Yeah, yeah, we, we work out together. Yeah, yeah, that's my dude. Okay, um, but but Kim, but now you have a very athletic family. Um, tell us what it was like growing up with all those athletes, and you know, you you know, having older brothers and, and athletic sister. What what was it like? Um, I would say it was pretty helpful uh, to be able to you know watch the process of my two older brothers for football, especially being able to learn a lot and. You know, really learn a lot from them um, for football. It's very helpful, and obviously it was great seeing them do their thing in high school. And then obviously uh, my younger sister for soccer, she's going to – she's doing great, and she's going to continue doing that, and it's exciting. Now, when you were younger and you saw Matt and Bink playing, you are like, that's me one day. Oh, yeah. That, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's good. <laughs> So, Caden, how was the recruiting process for you? It was busy, man. Um, I had I had a few Power Five schools that I was talking to, so it was um, a little complicated because before the rules changed, um, there was a way that we were able to kind of um, have some kind of contact um, with some bigger colleges. But like, so if we were to call them, they were able to answer the phone. So um, right. now, um, I believe the rule just changed to June fifteenth for baseball this year. But my last year, so I was in contact with ten to fifteen schools, and then all of a sudden, I think it was early April or late March, that got cut off until August first. So all that contact kind of went away, and then over that summer, they were still coming out to watch us, but we couldn't really talk to them. And the minute August first hit, it was wild. Um, I think I had twenty three phone calls Woo! on August first, and then um, that whole week was definitely busy. So, yeah, um, the recruiting process was was cool. It was stressful for sure. I know a lot of young athletes struggle with it, um, just because of all the variables that are involved. But yeah, yeah, your parents try to bribe you. You go to Cincinnati? No, no, no. Or um, money or <laughs> no, no, no. They kind of um, have just been supportive with any decision I've made, but also helped guide me to what the best decision for me should be. So when did yeah. you commit? When did you commit, Caden? I committed last fall. Okay. So you said the, the phone line started going in August. Was it September or October that you committed? I believe it was in October, November range, yeah. Right, and you you selected VMI, um, great school, great tradition. A lot of people don't know that George Patton started at VMI, transferred to West Point. What yeah. was it about VMI that made you chose VMI um, over the other schools? And in addition to that, what were the you know like top two or three besides VMI? I think it was the decision with VMI was just the fit. Um, really fit um, kind of what I was looking for like 
gives you kind of a structure. Um, not the normal college experience compared to other schools, but um, definitely something that kind of fits along my lifestyle. Um, the coaching staff kind of welcomed me with open arms. Um, were a lot more upfront with me about what they were looking for than other coaching staffs that I was being recruited by. Um, great baseball program, great development. They just got a new turf field, um, new facilities. And um, definitely money was also um, a key factor for what I was looking for because it's very tough to get a decent amount of money um, in baseball, for sure. And it, the the degree there just sets you up for for life, for sure. So that was also a big, big factor when deciding because you never know when the, the last time you're going to play is and you never know when someone's going to tell you you're done. So always have to make sure you're – set exactly what do you think the other like maybe out of the top three what do you think what were the other schools like that got in this the final selection so i had a few visits i think the top three other ones would have been um south carolina purdue and the fanatic oh, <laughs> probably, probably florida state florida state oh okay wow. amazing now, I want to ask you guys this because going to a, a service academy, that's that's first of all, you all are set for life. <laughs> you know, if you yeah. go through, if you can graduate, um, in terms of the potential for your career, for your life, it 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 is it is amazing. But but tell us a little bit, do you all what attracted you to it? Do you have family in the military? Um, uh, were you uh, raised, um, you know, what did, what what drew you to the military? Um, I do have some family. I have uh, – my great-grandparents were both in the military on both sides of the family. Um, my mother's father, my grandpa, was also in the military. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely been a background for my family. I, uh, neither of my parents served, but um, I definitely do have an interest to serve. Now, VMI, it's a little different. You don't have to serve if you go there all four years, but it's definitely not something I would shy away from. Um that decision hasn't been made yet. I obviously have a little bit to decide, but um, hopefully I don't have to. Hopefully I can go play beyond college after three years there. So that is exactly. that's the main goal. But in the end, I definitely um, wouldn't shy away from it for sure. Great. Yes, sir. Great. What about you, Matt? Any family military? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I have had no family that has served so um i will be the first but yeah uh, that's getting ready to change and your parents have got to love that tuition bill you know <laughs> oh definitely i mean yeah that was definitely like uh a huge like huge interest especially with the recruiting process i mean um so yeah i i think like the same things that Caden said i it would just the place sets you up for life it's not just and of course, it's not just about tennis there or any other sport. Um, there's a lot more that goes into play outside of the out of the field or the court. Um, there's a lot of training to do as as a just as a human and as a leader. Because um, at the end of the day, when you graduate, um, you know you have bigger things that you have to go to. You have to serve, and you have to, you know, they put you in a. They're training you four years to be put in a leadership spot. So they want to make sure that you're prepared for that. So um, when I, that just sounds, it sounded incredible to me. Um, and it was, it was a journey that I wanted to take. So. Good for you. What do you think you want to study there? Uh, I'm probably looking at either like a STEM, like a systems engineering or um, a foreign area study. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll probably look at either being a pilot or being like an attache, like in a, working overseas, one of those two things. Of course, that could change over the over the my time that I'm there. Of course, hoping everything that goes ever, hoping everything goes well. But so but those are the two that that I'm looking at right now at least. Matt, is that is that um is that Mountain West? They're playing out there with BYU and what conference is that? Yes, it's Mountain West. What are some of the other teams besides BYU? Um 
Uh, we got San Diego State, um, Nevada, yeah. Colorado State, Colorado. Okay. Uh, I want to say that this. I want to say that some schools in California might be in there too. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, the, just kind of schools around there. I think Montana maybe. Mm -hmm. could, so, yeah, just around. They play Army too. Sorry. And you play Army, right? You play Army. We do play Army. We'll be. Uh, we'll actually. I'll be traveling back to Virginia September twentieth to go play them. So. Oh, hear that, cool. Cam? <laughs> Where are you gonna play? Where are you gonna play them? We're gonna play them at the Army Navy Club. Which one, Fairfax or the one in Arlington? Arlington. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That'd be nice to check that out. Oh, I'll take Cam with me. <laughs> okay, hey, you're so, next. No, go I just wanted to let Matt know, Matt. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, but one one of my former, one of my another favorite athlete of mine, uh, Eli Bennett, just graduated back in May from the Air Force Academy. He was he ran track. He was the outstanding track and cross country athlete. When I coached him, he was a AAU and USA TF um, US track and field all American in high school and in youth sports. Uh, and he he graduated man. Now he's going to uh, go off school to be a pilot. But uh, his That's dad, he's, he's legacy. His dad attended the Air Force Academy and was a pilot. And was we were we coached uh, together. So I would say look up Eli, but uh, I don't know if he'll be around. But I do. I can't. We can talk offline. But his father, who uh, is retired from the Air Force, is in living in Cal Colorado now and around. So uh, if, he's that's amazing. The person to talk to. I'll, I'll see if I can hook that up. His dad, Chris Bennett, Colonel uh, Bennett, great guy. He he was in charge of ROTC at Texas A and M for a number of years. So we'll hook that up. Cam, tell us about. The military for you? Anybody in your family or or what? Uh, neither of my parents served, but I've had um my grandpa, my uncle have served, and my cousins in the military right now. So I've had a few that uh have served. But um, I would say the main the main reasons why I picked Army out of all the other schools was definitely challenges you like no other. Um, going there and getting that that high level of academics and playing that high level of football there is both both is something that you know. I'm going to school for football in school and both of those check out pretty well. So, you know, that's a great. And then obviously, you know, just the environment there and being able to be become the best player I can and the best person I can there is pretty important to me. And um, yeah, I would just say how much also, but like both of them said the future, uh, that was one of the main things as well, how much it, if you're able to get that degree and then, you know, obviously serve and that's something um, I'm fine with doing. It sets you up pretty well for the future. So, yeah. No, about the, I was no, just going to ask him about the history because you go back and you're like, this is a little different with West Point. I mean, you've got Ulysses S. Grant, Douglas MacArthur, Dwight Eisenhower, um, you know, Schwarzkopf, just uh, Omar Bradley, Patton. I mean, I, it must be, I, I have not been there. I've been very close to it, but it must be unbelievable going up there knowing you know people were going there you know 150 years ago famous famous americans yeah the the environment there and just where it's at is awesome historically like everywhere you're going there's just something you know a crazy fact about something somewhere on that campus and everything just at that on the campus is historically great and it's just a great place where it's at so now schedule wise y'all play notre dame right every year yeah wow Man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Army's always played a very, very solid. Uh, Rusty, you, you and I have talked about how good that, that football conference they're in is, too. Yeah. Outside of the big ones, I mean, that's a really, really strong football conference. Oh, yeah. Oh, now, aren't there like um, five guys from Army playing NFL right now or NFL camps as a free I agent? I believe so. Wow, I can't. I, I don't remember the specific names, but I know their dog position. Their dog players went to a NFL team. Ooh, with that six foot eight, six foot nine tackle for Pittsburgh, he was he was a West Point guy. I mean, he was like one of the top tackle. What's his name? You guys know who I'm talking about? The uh, the really really tall tackle for the Steelers. He may be retired. Villanueva, whatever. His name yeah, is. yep, that yeah. was him. 
He played yeah, tight end. He was the best point he, guy. Did he play tight end in, in college? No, he was a tackle. He was a tackle. A okay. six foot eight? Yep. Wow. Yep. You know, when I when I was in high school, I mentioned it off camera. I, I was being recruited by West Point, by Army, uh, to play football. And I just never took my visit. Never took my visit. I would talk to the coaches and put it off. No joke. But then probably about 10, 15, 10, 12 years ago, we took a family. My wife, my, my brother-in-law went to West Point. But my wife, she grew up part of her years in Poughkeepsie. And we had taken a family vacation. We went to everything upstate New York. We went to Buffalo, Syracuse, Cooperstown. We go to and we we go to West Point and visit it. And it was again years after I even thought about it. But campus, it was so pretty. Everything about it was just amazing. And I was going, I think if I had just taken my I know visit, just <laughs> taken my visit, I might have Falling in love. VMI, same way. VMI used to send me mail all the time. And I was just like, eh. I went to one. I did go. To, I didn't go. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I didn't go to my, take my visit to VMI because I'd gone to University of Richmond on a visit. And they were playing VMI. And this was in the 80s. And VMI was not good back then. And so I was like, I don't think I'm taking that visit. But anyway, um, all of, you cannot go wrong where you all are all going to school. This That is great. I, I yeah. am so proud of you guys. Um, you know, you. being from Prince William County, and and you're just doing going to be doing some great things. Let's let's go now to find out. Like, so what have been some of the big influences in your life? Um, and, and we'll start with you, uh, Kate. Tell us, has it been a parent? Has it been a coach? Could be multiple people. But who are some of the the people <clears throat> that have influenced you the most? And it doesn't have to be sports. Um, I'd have to say my parents. To be honest with you, um, they've been huge role models in my life. Um, both very hardworking people. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, my parents for sure. They've they've guided me through many situations. Um, through ups and downs, they've, they've always been the person that I fall back on or the people that I fall back on, so definitely them. Um, Coaching-wise, uh, Michelangelo definitely has been a dude that I've always – been able to have a great relationship with and fall back on. And more recently, my pitching coach, Kyle Whitten, has been um, one of the biggest influences in my life as well. So he's he's been a great dude for me too. And um, that relationship has really kind of made me make the leaps that I've gotten to within the last year or so. so. Good for you. Yeah. I got a quick question for Caden, because this is something that, um, in football, it's a little different. Um, yeah. if somebody in football is, is like, has pro written all over them, you know, we already know about them, but there are guys that you've never heard of mm -hmm. that are going to be major league stars. Could you see yourself playing major league, um, baseball? And, and that's not necessarily where you are now. That could, yeah. be, that could be to do with speed arm strength, you are a very good size. I mean, is that something you would aspire to? That is 100% been the goal since day one, since I was little. Um, I definitely don't want to have any regrets when I look back on it when I'm done. So um, yeah. the, the main goal is to end there, yeah. Um, who knows what will happen, but, yeah, definitely want to go as far as I can. Yeah, but, Kate, what, what I'm talking about is that you know, in, in, in football, we're thinking, okay, power five yeah. types of things. But in baseball, you could go in the 10th to 12th round and you could go to a college that's not a big name college. There are guys in the Hall of Fame like that because baseball is a little different the way people develop, right? 100%. 100%. Um, I know a big name, Brent Doyle from around here. That's yeah. what he's right now. He went to Shepard at D2. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Great, great point. Yep. It's a, it's a, that's a great example of that happening for sure. Right. Yep. There's also yes. my wife used to um, be at Woodbridge and one of her former students, I remember him saying to her, uh, he's like, well, I, I, it's best for me to go to junior college uh, because the junior college baseball is off the chart. The talent 
at the junior it's college. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Crazy good. Yeah. Yeah. And he excelled there. Then I think he played one year at a Division One school, and then he went. He got drafted. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Very, very good. I, I I am amazed at just the um at the size and the speed and the strength of today's baseball player. I mean, I, I, you know, I, yeah. I, 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 and again, I played and I was in high school, you know, 30 years ago, but you are, I've been going, been a big fan of Kogan baseball over the years. So I'm going to their games and I'm going like, these are some monsters. <laughs> you guys playing today. I mean, you, and, but that, that's, that's how things have gone for every sport. Like, mm-hmm. you know, your, your talent level um, is just in the, the training, like and I know you don't we don't talk about errors, but it, it's it's a big difference between the the baseball players in the seventies and eighties compared to the forties and fifties. But even you all, like some, I, I I can guarantee some of the top high school athletes now, with their training regimen, the speed of the ball, and the way the game, if they could play at a very high level with with some professional baseball players in the sixties, fifties, and seventies, yeah. you know, Billy Billy Wagner. Went to yeah. Fed. He's from Tazewell. Yeah. And Albert Pujols was a Juco player, too, by the way. Albert oh, Pujols. Yeah. Yep. And Mike Piazza. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's in my class. Yeah. So, Cameron, who who, who has been a, a major influence in your life? I would say my, my parents, for sure. Um, they've been great mentors since I've, you know, been growing up, and they've helped me so much throughout this process especially and they put all their time and their effort into me as a you know as a kid and I I couldn't have asked for anything better as parents um you know I really look up to both of them especially my dad uh so yeah I would say my parents and then for coaches I would say coach Hatfield and coach Francis have been incredible um I'm very blessed that them those two uh individuals came in right when I was a freshman and you know obviously I put in the work, but without uh, Coach Francis, especially as my position coach, I, I don't know if I would have these opportunities because he's the, he's done a lot for me uh, throughout these three years, and it's just been a I give a lot of my props to him. Hey Cam, real quick, Caden, your your parents are not from Virginia. Um, are are your parents from? Are they Virginia people, Cam? My parents are. Uh, my dad is from Pennsylvania, and my mom is uh, born and raised from in Virginia. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, Cameron. One other thing: How parents feel and your coaches and everybody when you told them you were deciding to transfer to Patriot for your senior year. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to smile and laugh, bro. That's all. That's all. His Sherman, dad would hey. go for that. <laughs> Sherman Rivers will not say Battlefield. I he know. Says, he says team. the purple team. The purple team. Yeah. The purple <laughs> yeah. Team. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, if you want to transfer, I'm sure they take you. No, I'm good. I'm good. They can they can find a place for you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, tell us about some of the major influences in your life. I I got to follow suit with with everybody else. Definitely my parents. Um, but um, you know. Both of them had different roles. You know, my dad was a coach. He was, he was, uh, he taught me, you know, he, he built the building blocks for me to, to do, to be able to become the player that I am now. So, um, he just out, nothing would have been possible without him. And he's just to this day as well. I mean, he, he's, he's by my side until the second I step off that Air Force bus. So, yeah. he's, uh, so I mean, it just wouldn't be anywhere near who I am without him. And my mom would, my mom was, uh, inc- and my mom has just been incredible too. She, she would drive me to all the tournaments. She would stay in the hotels with me. She would make sure everything's ready. You know, the bag is ready and everything. Um, she never played tennis, but you know, she hasn't stopped her from you know helping me and and being just as passionate about it as I am. And she's she's learned a lot how to keep score and how to, how to text, how to text my, my dad when he's not, when he's at work, text him what the score is um, and everything. So, I mean, she's, she's just been, both of them have just been the best that, that I could have ever asked for. So. Um, Are they Virginia people? 
No, my uh, my mom was my mom grew up in Connecticut and my dad grew up in Mississippi. Oh, oh man, wow. north and the went south. To, he went to the state though. So, so your your dad got an eye opening being from the south, married a northerner. I went that route, man. Those are those are a different breed of people, man. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. Well, she she uh she moved down to Mississippi uh, like when she's during high school. So she, yeah. So they, that's how they met. So, but she was born in Connecticut. So okay, all right, all right. I was gonna say, where'd your dad play JUCO tennis? Uh, I want to say that he. Gosh, he's gonna be he's gonna be, livid at me if I get this wrong. But I want to say that, you know, I'm not even gonna answer that because I'm not sure where he played junior college at. But that's okay. That's okay. He 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 got his degree at Mississippi State. Okay. Bulldogs. Yes. Right. Stark Vegas. I have a question for all three. Stark Vegas. Quick. I have a question for all three of you all. Because you're all superstars, you know, in our opinion. So how do you handle failure? Caden, you first. Mm-hmm. Um, failure is baseball. To be yeah. You, failure is the biggest part of baseball. Um, and that's what makes it so tough. But um to be honest with you, I kind of just try to keep the game the game. Um, remember that uh, how fun it was when I was younger and try to not make it so much of like a job and more of just like, like I'm still here to have fun. I'm still here to, you know, do what I love. And um, that's kind of eliminated the failure factor for me and not be so afraid of it rather than just um, focusing on the positives and moving forward with um, what I've learned from that failure. Good job. Good stuff. Jay, that's a really good question because, Rusty, the difference that we have now is our failures are not published to all the schools, and there's videotapes of our bad plays and all that. You know, yeah. Nobody in Newport News knew what we did. How, Caden, how do, you, how do you drown all that out, you know? <clears throat> you know, the social I mean, media thing. It's tough for sure. Um, social media plays a huge role with stuff like that. You kind of just have to stay off it, um, not pay attention to it. So, because getting involved in all that, there's there's so many different traps and um, places you don't want to really fall into searching through social media. So, definitely try to steer away from that. That it'll make you feel on top of the world sometimes where you you shouldn't, and it'll make you feel worse than you really are. So. Definitely have to say even kill for sure. Cam. No, I was just want to say yeah, follow up with that. I just want to say Caden, okay, you hit it like with your response, it was perfect because baseball is a sport where you're considered being successful if you can hit out of ten at bats, if you can get hit three times. Yeah. Like three three to four All times. The same. All the same. So right, when you think about that, like you you failed six other times, yeah, or seven other times, but you can't let that distract you. Like you have to get back in there, you know. Yeah. Um, you and you pitch like somebody could hit a home run off you. It doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You get back in there. So I I love your answer, but that's that's the type of thing, um, that 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 does build something in you in terms of character and working hard and understanding that. So that's great. Go ahead, Jay. Um, I would, I would say, uh, you know, fail, failure is always going to happen no matter who you are, no matter what sport it's always, you know, failure is a huge thing in sports and that's not something you should really shy away from. Uh, it's something you should really, I, I know all of you have probably heard that a lot, but you should, you should really take uh, the mistakes and whatever and really uh, use it to your advantage and learn from it and keep your head up and not, you know, get down on yourself or anything because failure happens no matter what happens plenty of times and it will keep happening as long as you uh, get better and improve every time off of every failure than that, it'll be worth it. So great stuff. For those who don't know, Cameron has never lost a regular season high school football game. 30 what? Right. Yes, sir. Am I right? Yes, 30 sir. and 0. He has never lost a regular season high school football game. They've only lost in the playoffs. Um, but 
but that the thing is they keep coming back. I didn't say they were 10 and 0 and then they were 1 and 9 cuz they they dropped their heads. They were 10 and 0, 10 and 0, 10 and 0 and they keep coming back. So that's that's something to My goal to is for him be 0 and 1 when they play Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> cuz then <laughs> they'll be when is that that the second game? Or the first, first game. game. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, 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 this is not a question for Cam because we don't want to look too far into the future. But if Battlefield were to win this region, would they face the Hot and Springs region or would they face that Hampton Roads, um, Western Branch, Oscar Smith? Which, um, because it's right in the same, they would face that, the Fairfax team, they would face the Fairfax, region. but. That's Sometimes. right. That's right. That's right. Lake Braddock. Lake Braddock yeah. went down to uh, Freedom. Okay. So then Lake Braddock. Okay. But sometimes they'll change it during the midseason. Right. They did that fight. last year. Yeah. But for years, it was always us against the winner from 75784. Yeah. You know, and then Fairfax was battling each other. All not that state. And, and region D and C. C and D and then A and B. So last year, was the first time for in a long time that they had actually switched it up, and um, and and so in you that way, we could see a battlefield Oscar Smith state championship. By the way, that could be the first. and, and I say that out of respect for battlefield. Battlefield is a team that's ready and hungry. Um, they have the best four down linemen in the state, right, Cam? Absolutely, exactly. Preach. Cam, we're gonna have to get you back on because we could we will for football. Yeah. football, yeah. Because because I told him that there, there's he a knows. whole question we could get down the road of yeah, he hey, knows freedom is gone now. What does that mean? So don't yeah. worry about it now. All right, we'll talk about that later. All right, so um you guys we talked about who's influenced you, we've talked a lot about sports, but let's let's talk up right now, let's go outside of sports. What do you guys do? in your free time away from sports okay do, do you like watching movies do you like to cook do you like to play video games what what does uh uh matt like to do when he's not a tennis court or studying with all those excellent grades <laughs> well um definitely this year i i kept myself pretty busy um so I didn't spend too much time at home usually. Uh, a lot of times I was staying after school with the orchestra and stuff. Colgan's pretty, Colgan's pretty high on that stuff. So there was a lot of outside commitments with that. Um, I ran a club as well. So I was, it was the Morgan's message club. So it's about athletes and like athletes managing stress between their, um, between their schoolwork and, and outside athletics as well. So I was the head of that at my school. So I was ran some meetings with that and had some like outside events for that. Um, but when I was home, I usually spent most of it just resting. <laughs> so, yeah. sorry. You need it. Yeah. You, yeah. Yes. You're... Um, any so, video games or anything? Any online? Like, we all got to have some. Occasionally. Work. Occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, usually just like on the weekends, just, yeah. uh, just to unwind. Um, but those are, those were kind of the three, the three main things that I kept my, myself pretty busy with. So mm -hmm. what about you, Kay? Um, outside of training in baseball during my free time, usually I'm just either hanging with my family or, um, hanging with my girlfriend for sure. Um, Hold on a second. Yeah. Is it, is it Tyler Bassett's sister? Yeah, I mean you could you could say it like that. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> the player of the year. <laughs> yeah. That's good. He's he's a great guy. Uh we've been friends for a while. Um great family. Yeah. Would you so senior year? You hang out with your girlfriend. You guys go to the movies because going to the movies is getting back. Um, you know, what are some of the activities that you guys do together? Um, Rusty, I remember, you know, going to Coliseum Mall, hanging out, 
going to the mall, going to the movies. Um, we had a few parties, but those things like that, I mean, you, is there a like a go-to spot that you guys have out like, what is it, Gainesville, Haymarket area? Yeah, I mean, I'd say there's there's some malls nearby, stuff like that. Um, it can be different every time. Um, I don't know. Oh, well, nobody goes to the mall anymore. I wasn't saying that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean it's, people still go to the mall, dude. They're, yeah. they're tearing Fair Oaks down, by the way. Um, they are. Institution. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Hey, Cam. Yeah, um, outside of, you know, training, football, school, all that, I'm um, a big – well, my whole family's a big uh, MMA, hey, MMA hey, family. Hey, Cam, okay. basketball, mm-hmm. Patriot Patriot basketball fan. <laughs> Ignore him. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no but um, um, we're a bit we're big UFC fans. You know, on the weekends when whenever we have time, the families together, we're, we're usually uh watching a lot of you know seven straight hours of from prelim wow. UFC. So yeah, it's a uh, I would say that's the main thing. Obviously, you know, getting some Xbox in and all that when you can. Seven straight. Do you do you train MMA? I, I don't. Some- I don't. No, I'm just uh, we're just really into big fans of the UFC, so we're really into it. Okay, because I have some friends who actually train, but then um, they don't fight, but they just like the training. And and then I've known some athletes, especially football players, that have used that as a part of yeah. their training. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Kirk. You want to hit him up with some any uh, other um, questions before we wrap this up? I'm dying to hear Matt Staten's Mount Rushmore of tennis players, four best ever. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, I think I think I got to put Federer, Djokovic, and Nadal up there. I think that would be terrible to not do that. Um, and for the fourth one, probably got to go back a couple decades. Um, I'm going to go with Pete Sampras. Oh, okay. That's good. Those are my top four. That's good. So. What about you, Kirk? I know you're a big tennis fan. Um, well, a lot of it's sentimental. Uh, Djokovic, best ever. Just on um, that guy's unbelievable. Not the flashiest player, but just, uh, you know, nobody serves on volleys. And then, um Federer, and that's almost one A and one B. Um because I'm older, I won't put Nadal in there. Uh, but I would say Sampras and then uh I grew up with John McEnroe. I mean, I was he, gonna say, he didn't I have much power. The McEnroe. guys, the guys today would blow him off the court because he didn't hit the ball very hard. Matter of fact, and I'll be quick with this. When we switched, well. When we went from wood to nobody play with wood anymore, McEnroe really struggled. Like, Yvonne Linda was killing him for the longest time because he didn't hit the ball hard. But um, I think he would adapt to that. As far as talent goes, man, John McEnroe and Rod Laver were just unbelievable with their touch and things like that. The other thing that I would point out is these guys are superior athletes now. That their athletic ability is unbelievable. You had some guys playing tennis back in the day that were good athletes. Now you've got to be an incredible athlete. Now that's the other thing people don't realize about a lot of those. But you've got to be an unbelievable athlete in fitness and training. Um, but yeah, it, it's been fun to watch, and you know we could talk about it all day. I would love to see the American women have been good. Uh, American women are getting exciting again, man. We've got some young players, and they're fun to watch, and they have personalities. The men's game has been a little stale. You know, after Sampras, um, who's Roddick? Andy Roddick. After Andy Roddick, we really haven't had anybody. So it is very, very fun when there's an American or two vying for Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, and at the top. And, you know, I think I think U.S. tennis is, is just fine. It's just cyclical. We'll have that again. But um, yeah, I'm I'm right, Matt. I, I agree with you uh, on those. Um, I hate to see those guys get older, though. You know, because they've been so much fun to watch. You know, just watching those guys. You know, Federer and Djokovic, just whew, unbelievable. So definitely, yeah. They're Cam, Cam Mount Rushmore for football. 
um, just both sides of the ball. Either way, it's football. Either way, football. Either Brady. way, but it's just the Ray guy, the punter. I mean, you, you tell us. Got to go with Tom Brady. Obviously, I feel like it has to be on everyone's. Yeah, um, okay, Brady. Deion Sanders for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Deion. Um, Sorry, I'm a little biased. I'm gonna think of all defense here besides Tom. That's fine. Um, I'll go with uh, Lawrence Taylor. Oh, LT. Yeah, LT. Virginia guy. Seven five right. seven. Yep. Lawrence Taylor. All right. And one more. I feel like I gotta go with uh, Ray Lewis. I feel like I gotta go with Ray Lewis. Oh, okay. oh that's, can, in, that's interesting. Can, we'll have to talk can, about that sometime. Yeah. Great list. Great list. Caden, the best, best baseball player in the history of the world just passed away, but we want to hear yours. Your Mount Rushmore for baseball players. In no specific order. Um, I know this might be con- controversial, but uh, Barry Bonds. Hey, you're right. No, he's controversial. Uh, See the ball hit the see the ball hit the ball. Bonds probably the best bit ever. Okay, go ahead. Tony Gwynn. Yeah, Ooh, man. that's interesting. Um, Amazing ball player. You know, he Mantle. was a starting point guard on San Diego State too. By the way, he was. All right, three well, three would be Mickey Mantle for sure. Yeah, Mantle. Um, and then I'm gonna go with the pitcher. I'm gonna go with Nolan Ryan. Okay, stand it off. Oh. Just just the durability. Willie Mays, is that just too long ago for you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Willie Mays think, is not four, dude. I'll just – I know oh, we're yeah. asking you guys, but I don't – I think he's one and two is a long way down. That guy was so amazing. And, by the way, he would be amazing now. Yeah. He's a timeless player. His speed, his power – I mean, the way that he played um, and his hitting was just unbelievable. Um, I was saying he was the best player 30, 40 years ago. For, so, two things. Who do you think has the best fries? Yeah, fries were coming. Fries? Who the best? And then I'm just editing Kirk's a little bit. but And then what is your cheap place to eat? Like, I'm sure you guys are keeping a pretty good, good, Good workout and you're eating right, but what? Where's the place you'd like to go? And this kind of like fast food that that you know eh, it's not the best for me, but I love this one fast food place. All right, Matt, Matt, fries, and then it's eleven o'clock and you're getting DoorDash. So don't say Wawa, which is such a Northern Virginia answer. We want your number one fries and we want your number one fast food place late night. All right, so fries. Oof. Um, I mean, I'm gonna go with Popeyes fries. Oh, I think that might be a little. I've never heard that one, okay. But I mean, they're pretty well seasoned. I mean, yeah, they, just, they look appealing as well. So yeah, I, mean, I got um, respect for your fry game. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then, let's see. Cheap. I mean. I guess uh, I don't know if Chipotle counts as, counts as cheap, but if I go anywhere. That's not open at 11, but that's close enough. Real quick, <laughs> Matt, are you fried chicken guy? Because if you go to Popeye's, fried chicken. Royal Ooh. Farms is the best fried chicken right now. What do you think? Man, I feel like I might, I, I'm going to say Cane's is the best ch- fried chicken, but. Okay. I mean, can't really can't really go wrong with any of the places with the fried chicken. I mean. Unless I unless I haven't been, I mean, I haven't really been to like KFC or like you know, any some of the other places. But I don't think okay. I've ever had bad fried chicken. We're so. too far up north to get good stuff. Caden, what about you, man? Fries? Don't think about it. Just tell us. Fries and the ghost burger. <laughs> What's that? Smash burger fries. Smash okay. burger. Okay. Yeah. They're pretty. And good. Then They're pretty good. Your fast food. Cookout. Cookout. That's Cookout. a great answer. Great <laughs> answer. That is a yes, really good answer for for fast food that's fast and good. <laughs> I love the <laughs> <your> shakes. <laughs> yes. Cool, cool. Cam fries. 
Um, might sound a little crazy. I'm not. I'm not the biggest fry guy. I don't really, you know, eat uh eat fries. But off the fries I've had, um, going with Matt, the Popeyes fries were pretty pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Right. Yeah, okay. and then um, me and Matt can have the same answers. But I wouldn't like you said. I don't know if it would count as cheap. But if I eat, you know, any kind of fast food type of food, I'm always eating Chipotle. Yeah, we always All just right. say that music, food, and cinema. He's a common denominator. Almost anybody will talk about it. And it's also a peek into your soul, you know. Um, we'll have to have you guys on some more and talk to you about movies and music and things like that. And Matt, this is big for you. You are starting your career with the Air Force Academy when? Two days. Kids in a hotel, man. Air. Look at that. Colorado Springs. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. I'm losing my hair, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a blessing. Good luck to you, Matt. Um, and then thank all of you for for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. Um, again, you have a, a common thread. You're from Prince William County. You're all great athletes, and then you're going to service academies. I'm um, looking forward to to following all of you. Um, I'm definitely going to for football get out there and, and watch some battlefield. And now I I got to check Caden out. Great job, y'all. Uh, before we, we 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 sign off, is there anybody you want to give a shout out to, or you want to thank? Start with you, Matt. I'll thank Travis Wedge. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, coach. <laughs> he's been my coach for the past two years for high school. He's been he's been a big supporter. He's uh he's uh he's taken us to states. He's been he's been great. You know, he was a football coach for a bit, but he uh, he. Just, that's just, my man, Coach Wedge. <laughs> yeah, uh, he transitioned over to tennis. I mean, he's just he's been the best. So I mean, he's uh, you know, as in a tennis perspective, he he's come a long way in, in his game knowledge and everything, and he he's become a, a fantastic coach for for both the boys and, and the girls. And we 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 just got a new girls coach, but he's uh, they're both very involved with with each other. So I'll you know he's uh. He's been he's been great. We've still been in touch, so I'll, I'll miss uh, I'll miss talking to him and you know competing with him. But you know I I think that the Colgan tennis is in good hands. So. Yeah, he's a great man. Yeah, yeah, I like Coach Wade. Uh, how about you, Kate? Any shout outs you want to give? Shout out uh, Jennifer Perilla. Uh, she's my mom's uh, organ donor. Oh, oh yeah, she's been awesome. So. Definitely want to give thanks to her when when able to. So, yes, sir. Cam. Huh? Um, I'll just give a shout out to my my parents, my coaches. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, look, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. this. Has been an honor, I, and I, and you all, um, you 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 you've been doing great things and you'll continue to do great things. We want to get you back on the show. We'll see how your seasons are going. Um I don't I don't know about you, man. I don't know how free they'll let you be. <laughs> but yeah. <we'll> see. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what my availability would be. I, I, I won't have I won't have my phone for like the next seven weeks. So I know. Please let me see what that hair looks like um Friday. <laughs> I wish I could, but I couldn't. I'll, uh... It's going to look like me and Jay. <laughs> all Air Force tennis, you'll probably, there'll probably be pictures of me getting my head shaved. So. Yeah, yeah. Man, so, all right, guys, this has been a lot of fun. So, uh, Kirk, anything else? No. Um, Matt, if you have our email, I'd like to see you play against Army at, um, when you play here locally. So if you can shoot us an email, I'll come see you in September. I'd love to do that. Sounds good. We'll do. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. All right, cool. Well, thanks, guys. So for Cameron, Matt, Caden, Jay, and my co-host, Kirk Gilliard, this has been the Kirk Bird Show. We are out.